This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Now in this lesson, let's talk about working with your customers and your customer list. In QuickBooks, you can see the customer list by clicking on the customer center right here, and you have a list of all your customers over here on the left. We have Christy Abercrombie is our customer in this situation. Then we have jobs for Christy. This is helpful if you have different jobs for customers to see a job profitability report, to see how you're doing on that. So maybe we did the family room and remodeled her family room last year, and now this year we're gonna work on her kitchen or something. You can set up jobs for your customers so that you can see the job profitability. On the other hand, your business might be such that you don't have jobs. You might just have a full list of customer names, and that's okay too. So let's go in and let's take a look at Christy, and I'm gonna double click on her, and let's go ahead and just say okay to get rid of this message here. What you would do when you're adding a new customer, and again, to add a new customer, right here is where you click, new customer, or you can right click, new customer. We're going to go in and take a look at Christy, though, and show you one that's already set up. On the top here where it says customer name, you need to choose how do you want to see it in your customer list. Whatever I put here is how it's going to appear over here in my customer list. So in this example, we have the last name and then the first name. So you could choose how you want to put it there. You might have a company name here. Then down here, if you're working with a business, you put your company name. You put first and last name if it's an individual. So you'll see some of the boxes are blank. You don't have to fill in every box just because it's there. In here is where we're gonna put in the bill to address. What's the address we need to send the bill to? Then we might have a ship to address as well. Now, one of the things about the ship to address, it doesn't mean you actually have to send things to them. For example, let's say you're, you're a contractor and you do repairs. Maybe insurance is paying for the repairs. So you might bill to the insurance company, but the address might be the house where the repairs are done. So there might be some situations where you're billed to, and then the ship to address might be where the work was performed. And we can have multiple ship to addresses as well by clicking here and add new. So think about if you need more than one address, how can you use the ship to feature? Over here is where we're gonna put in some general contact information as far as the contact name, phone number, fax, an alternate phone, an alternate contact. An email address is great because now you can email the invoices and email estimates and email things to your customers directly from within QuickBooks. So you'd wanna make sure you enter the email address here. On the additional info tab, this is where you can go through and group your customers by type. For example, Rock Castle Construction has set it up for commercial and residential. This is helpful for things when you maybe want to do some mailing and you want to send a mailing to all your residential customers and you want to let them know about a special or you want to contact all your uh, commercial customers to let them know that you're, you've got a special deal for them. So how could you group your customers by type? You can also get reports based on the type of customer. What are the terms of sale? When do you want your customers to pay you? And if you need to add new, you can do that by clicking on add new and set up the terms. For example, if you're a property manager or a landlord and you have rent, then you might want to set up a new term for rent and it might be date driven that the rent is due, maybe the rent's due by the fifth day of the month. So you can go through and set up your own terms if you have discounts on what your terms are by just clicking here and click add new. So you indicate what are the terms for that customer. If you have sales reps, you could put the sales reps initials here, but another thing this is useful for is just who's responsible for that customer. Who is it the contact person for that customer? So it doesn't have to be a sales rep. How do you prefer to send them their invoices? Are you going to be emailing them or do you wanna mail them? This will indicate whether it's marked to be sent or to be printed 
or you can do none and just kind of leave that blank depending on you. I encourage you to email your invoices though because that way you get paid faster. It will attach that as a PDF to the email and that way they get it and they can pay you quicker. In the lower corner here, this is where you indicate is the customer taxable or not. Some customers are going to be non-taxable. Perhaps it's a nonprofit organization, a church, a school, a government. Maybe it's somebody who's buying for resale. If they are tax exempt, you would enter non-taxable and put in the resale or tax exemption number here. That way you've got that information available in the event of a sales tax audit. If they are taxable, then which tax rate applies to them? Which city do they live in? So you may have multiple cities set up. So this is for each customer, which city would apply to them. In this example, we've got San Thomas. So you set up which one applies to them for their business. This is an area that a lot of people miss because the custom fields is blank when you first start using QuickBooks. But this is where you can create your own custom fields to track things for your customers based on your needs. For example, you wanna see their birthday or their spouse's name. Maybe you wanna know their anniversary date or particular sizes or color preferences. Whatever it is, you can create your own box by clicking define fields and set up a box to track whatever it is you want to track. So perhaps I want to track cell phone numbers. I can create a new box and I can track that on my customers or on my vendors or on my employees. I'm just going to track it on customers and click on OK. And now it says I've activated this field. You click OK and you'll see cell phone number. I now have a box where I can enter that information for my customers to track it. Remember, if you're entering it in QuickBooks, I would be able to customize a report to get these custom fields on that report. The Payment Information tab is where you might have account numbers for your customers or you may set a credit limit for your customer. The problem is, if I set a credit limit for my customer of, say, $5,000, I don't get a warning until I'm entering that invoice for them and then it says warning this will put them over their credit limit. So it's after you've done the sale a lot of times. You really should monitor your receivable balances and how much customers owe you and don't just rely on this because usually you won't see a message that they're going over the credit limit until you're actually entering the invoice and then it's too late. Down here is where you could enter how do they usually pay and if you wanted to put their credit card numbers on file, you can do that. QuickBooks will X out everything but the last four numbers of their credit card number and their special security measures surrounding credit cards which will make you change your password every 90 days and you have to have a strong password. But you can enter that information if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. So again, if I wanted to add a new customer, I can click up here. But if I wanted to add a new job, for example, Christy, we've already got her family room, kitchen, and her bath. Maybe we want to right click and do add job. I can do that as well. And perhaps this year, maybe we're going to do the living room. So you can add a new job just by right clicking and you'll see now we've got a new job for Christy. So this is working with your customer list. Right now we're looking at all of our active customers. Maybe we want to see all customers. Perhaps we want to see just customers with an open balance. You can sort and filter which customers you want to see right here. If I'm looking for a certain customer, I could click on find to look for something based on maybe their phone number if I needed to. Or maybe I know I want to look for them by zip code number. So you can use that find field as well. So that's your customer list. Um, hopefully that will help you when you're working with your customers.